Hello and welcome to the fourth in a set of tutorials for XFX Toolkit version 2, now with added object tracking. If you haven't got the plugin pack installed, please follow the link below. We'll move on to the adjustment layers included in the pack. One of our favourites is the widescreen mat, and if you drop that on to a shot like this helicopter shot, it instantly gives you that uh, the black bars, the cinema look, whatever you want to call it. Now, it's quite flexible. You can, of course, adjust the end position on there, but it's got a build in and build out as well. Now, at the moment, those are, those are toggled off, so it just cuts straight on. If I put those on and put the start position to the end, so when I play it, the bars will actually animate on. And also I can bring the speed down as well to bring that slower or faster. Really nice way of doing that. Um, there's also an offset as well, so I can move this up and down. And that's not moving the video behind it either. And we can make this another colour, should you want. Maybe not that. But we can also put an edge on and blur the edge so really quite flexible but the main feature is being able to set the actual depth of the widescreen mat and then it animates in and out and I use that all the time really handy on to dim auto and if I drop that on the same helicopter shot you can see what it does is it goes to a set state of the plugin up in the inspector. So it starts off and that's nice video and what it's doing, it's dimming. It's actually bringing the level of the luminance down and we can toggle that on and off. There's also desaturation and blur. And let's stick on the blur just for a sec because what that is really good for, you might have a busy background and your graphic doesn't work over the top. So if I just use this industrial logo here, you can see if I put a transition on the front there and then go back, it makes that really pop and stand out. So that's a really handy way of giving emphasis to graphics. Or you could be using it for, say, something like bullet points, um, end credits, anything like that, that you just need a bit more bite with graphics or something that's overlaid over the top. On to the motion blur adjustment layers. And a good example is to show you some motion blur on a transition. At the moment, we have a 3D transition here, a folder. And as you can see, we have a sharp edge. Um, when that animates, it doesn't look that realistic. But if I mark the transition, we've seen this before with an X, go to motion blur medium, it's the choice. You can have any of the three, then hit Q. What it'll do is it'll add some motion blur. And you can see there, we've immediately got a soft edge because um, it's putting the motion blur onto the move. And that actually gives it a lot more realistic move. It won't play in real time there because it's a lot going on. But as you can see, three levels of motion blur, very easy to apply. And it also works on graphics. On the end here, we've got the basic 3D zoom in 3D title. Now, again, if I go mark that and go to medium, hit Q, put the motion blur on, that will play in real time. And we get a nice blurred... There you go. It's a good place to stop. Nice blur title coming in. If I turn it off, you can see the difference. So a great way to add motion blur on there. And the final thing, we have a simple adjustment layer that everybody likes. You just drop that on footage and you can do whatever you like with that. You can move it up and down. You can actually color correct it. Um, and underneath the, the image will follow. Um, so it's very good for doing a colour correction. Uh, you can pump up on the colour board, the colour wheels or the curves. Anything on that adjustment layer will affect the video or graphic below. In the next tutorial we'll be looking at picture moves in 3D and shrink backs, which are pretty clever. See you then. <laughs>